tonight, the most corrupt town in America, the small town of Hampton, Florida. You may just have that honor. The recently elected mayor in jail for selling drugs. But that's not all. There's accusations of nepotism and a lot of money that's missing. State lawmakers have an idea to clean it up. They want to wipe it off the map. But you know what? It isn't as easy as it should be. And Ed Lavendera has our out front investigation. Welcome to the twilight zone of government gone wrong, Hampton, Florida, population 477. And the only way I could relate to it was the old Dukes of Hazard. They'd make Boss Hogg look like a Sunday school teacher. It started a few years ago when the city of Hampton sanctioned a speed trap along Highway 301. The tiny town had 19 police officers. That's one officer for every 25 residents, writing tickets to boost the city's coffers. On this side of the road, you got Sheriff Gordon Smith says one of the officers was nicknamed Rambo. He was actually getting out of a car with an AR-15 strapped across his shoulder, had like SWAT tactical gear on. To write tickets. To write tickets. This is crazy, right? Let me tell you, that's way above crazy. It wasn't illegal, but in three years, officers wrote about $600,000 in traffic fines. But when state auditors examined the city's books, they found a rotten cesspool in this swampy landscape. For starters, how that money was spent is unclear, and it's triggered a state criminal investigation. A few weeks ago, this bombshell was dropped here on the front porch of City Hall, an audit of the way the city of Hampton has done its business. Inside, 31 different findings of inappropriate action, questionable record keeping, shady accounting, accusations of nepotism, money that's missing, you name it, it's in here. And now some state lawmakers want to make the city of Hampton disappear, wipe it off the map. According to the audit, several city employees were overpaid roughly $9,000. A city credit card had $27,000 of questionable charges and $132,000 were charged to a city account at the convenience store next to City Hall. City officials say they're reviewing their operations and considering the audit's recommendations. That's a lot of money. But nothing symbolizes Hampton's woes quite like this. We found the elected mayor sitting in the county jail. He was in office a month and a half when he was arrested in an undercover sting and charged with selling oxycodone. He denies dealing drugs and he's not connected to the city's financial mess. The impression out there right now is that uh, the people who've been running Hampton are just a bunch of crooks. Exactly, and I think that's, that's not very far from the truth at all. They're either a bunch of crooks or a bunch of really stupid people. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it like that, but it's the truth. You know, I mean, and it looks more like they're crooks than anything, you know. But you, given the situation where you're in... Um... Yeah, I look like a crook sitting here in an orange suit, don't I? <laughs> The city's former clerk, Jane Hall, is one of the central figures in the state's audit. She hasn't been accused of any crimes, but the audit was highly critical of how she handled city business. We were here and gave you guys a chance to... After we left, Hall emailed us. She wrote the questionable expenditures were for city-related business and is documented. She added, there has been a deliberate campaign to make me look like some kind of criminal mastermind. That would be like saying Snoopy is Cujo's twin brother. Told us to make sure we watched the no trespassing sign, gave him a chance to talk to us, and they didn't want to. We look corrupt as heck. I mean, what the heck's wrong with us? Former Mayor Jim Mitzel walked off the job several years ago. He isn't suspected of any wrongdoing. But Mitzel says the mayor's $125 a month paycheck isn't worth the headache. City officials are asking state lawmakers who want the city shut down for one last chance to fix its problems. The former mayor thinks they should get that chance. The government bailed out General Motors. The government bailed out Chrysler. Why can't the state of Florida bail out Hampton? Don't shut our town down. This is our town should not be shut down. The saga of a town lost in the woods, mired in a mess that might shut it down forever. Ed, that was incredible. I just like watching you go up to each of those doors trying to get people to talk to you. But your conversation with the mayor in jail, that was surreal. You know, the surreal thing about that is actually he went into office because he had heard about all of this, these things kind of going on. And the, and the, the irony here is that he wanted to help clean it up in, in some way. Obviously, he wasn't in office long enough. Uh, but, you know, now the city of Hampton has been basically given a list of uh, things that uh, demands, essentially, from state lawmakers that they must comply with in the next few weeks. And that means everyone in city government has to go. City council members, wow. mayor, police chief, everybody, as, as well as some other demands. And if they can meet those demands, state, law, like, state lawmakers might consider 
giving them another chance. But if not, uh, the wheels are in motion to dissolve the town. All right, Ed Lavendera, thank you very much. I mean, it's just incredible, and I think the way Ed told the story is amazing. Ryan Salam's with me now, CNN contributor, familiar face to all of our viewers. All right, here's the question. Ed goes to this town. This town is little. This town is utterly and incredibly corrupt. How common is this? You know, the thing is that in Hampton, the corruption was spectacular and obvious. You know, you have corrupt money changing hands. The real problem is you've got a lot of towns out there where the corruption is subtler. It's not as obvious. You don't see it immediately. Like Bell, California, a town in L.A. County. And this was a town that people didn't pay attention to. You don't have a ton of smart investigative journalists covering the city hall of Bell, California. And so a lot of people can get away with a lot of skullduggery and a lot of corruption that just doesn't rise to that spectacular level. All right, but, but the point is what it sounds like what you're saying is it happens everywhere and in different ways and at different levels. But this is a huge problem when you talk about waste in a country that has a debt problem and is trying to cut back. I mean, how hard is it for a state to dissolve a town like this? I mean, do you, did you sort of take a gasp like I did as Ed reported that the state of Florida may bail this town out? Yeah, I certainly did. And the problem is that we have tons of little governments. We don't just have town governments. We have water utility districts. We have school boards. We have so many different governments that you don't always have a lot of accountability there. And mm -hmm. that's very hard to undo because they all have uh, vested interests. They right. all have people who are on the take, who make money from the fact that you have a ton of uh, these invisible governments. So, Ed, why would they not dissolve this town? What, did anyone make an argument to you that made sense? Well, you know, the, the argument there is that the, the city runs essentially the, the water system, which when you read the audit is just uh, apparently full of all sorts of issues that need to, that need to be addressed. Uh, but this is a city that has been around for a, a long time. It's a small town, uh, but there's a great many people in that town who would like to make sure and see that it is saved. A lot of people believe that there's some sort of vendetta against the town, that, uh, that there's, you know, they're trying to dissolve it for whatever reasons, and there's a, you know, kind of a complex series of reasons for why they, why they believe that. Uh, but they feel like they should be able to run themselves. They, don't, they would essentially be dissolved into Bradford County, and they don't want to see that happen. I mean, but, Ryan, it's interesting what Ed's reporting. I mean, Hampton is an egregious example, but it's not anywhere near as egregious as, let's just say, Chicago, where corruption, apparently, a University of Illinois study, so it's his own state, not biased, yeah. $500 million in corruption in the city of Chicago. And you see this, the most corrupt cities in this country. It's not going to shock anybody. Chicago, L.A., New York, Miami, and Cleveland. You can't dissolve Chicago, L.A., and New York. But that is a cancer that has to be fixed. Well, the thing is, those cities actually have a big advantage. They employ lots of people, and you're going to have some corruption. The cities where you've got a real problem, think about those little suburban cities just south of Chicago. Think about some of those suburban towns in L.A. that don't get the attention, that don't have the smart guys like Ed, the smart reporters uncovering this stuff all the time because they don't have yeah. the resources. That's where you have the really big problems, I fear. Whereas New York, Chicago, L.A., you, you've at least got people who are trying to root out that corruption, who are paying attention. Right. And you have and you have media, I mean, certainly we see those reports all the time exactly. here in New York. But Ed, from your reporting, I mean, why is it so difficult to, to stop this? I mean, I know you looked at Hampton specifically, but I mean, do you get the impression that, well, nobody really wants to deal with it because that corruption at a different level is happening even above Hampton, even in other places, and nobody wants to draw attention to themselves. Well, you know, I think the oversight issue is the bigger thing, whether it be news media oversight or just internal oversight, where right. you have people kind of watching each other. Uh, when you're kind of out away, maybe from an urban center, Maybe that you know you're more prone uh, to see this, but you know a, a couple of people we, we talked to, running cities, whether it be small a small thing or a small city or a large city, is complex these these days in in many ways. And the sheriff there was wondering whether or not there was just kind of the brain power to to handle it all. All right. Well, thanks very much to both of you. I appreciate it. Uh, a pretty incredible report.